Joining us now is Liz Harrington, the national spokesperson for the Republican National Committee. Liz, so over the past couple of days, I feel like there's been a little bit of more skepticism regarding domestic travel restrictions. We've seen specifically those on the right a little bit saying maybe these lockdowns aren't the necessary response as we destroy our economy in the sake of public health. What do you make of those type of claims? I think there's a tremendous amount of concern for our economy and, of course, the health of Americans. And if you're looking for honesty, I think that's why it's very important. We know President Trump's going to be honest with the American people, as he has every single day from that briefing room. And it's that's why it's very important when he put these guidelines in place. Uh, we want Americans to have a job to come back to. Uh, so we have these 15 days to slow the spread. We have about another week going in. And it's very important that we all commit to that to really get uh, make sure that this doesn't have as drastic effect as we've seen it has in other countries. But on the economic side, that's why the Senate, Mitch McConnell, had a bipartisan group of senators working over the weekend to make sure there are these businesses back for American workers to come back, because we are going to get through this. And Nancy Pelosi flew back to Washington and blew it up. Hmm. So that's what's unacceptable. Uh, now American workers who are hurting and families that are stuck at home and wondering how to pay their bills won't have those the assurance of paychecks this week because of what the Democrats did in voting down a bipartisan bill that they themselves negotiated. We, we need to get uh, Congress to start putting the interests of the American workers first. Yeah. And it's absolutely a very good concern. And I know the president uh, has it uh, at the forefront of his concerns as well. And I think you say something that's important there. The American people will get through this. We're a resilient people. Uh, the American people, what have been asked of the American people over the past nine days, part of this t t drastic type of measure, is remarkable. They've done it. They've taken it in stride. They've stayed indoors. They've been told not to work in an unprecedented time. The American people truly are amazing. We are going to get through this, but it's a question at, at what cost. So after this 15-day period is up, uh, the president said he's going to reevaluate what steps come next it could go in either direction we could relax the restrictions or we could kind of increase them the same way that we saw done in places like South Korea Italy China do we have any inference of what will happen after that 15-day period or what's on the table I think the White House and President Trump is going to pick whatever path is best for not only the health of our country but the economy of our country as well and we'll have to see what that will look at what the data comes in and what happens. Uh, but that'll be what the decision will be based on, what's in the best interests of Americans as a whole. And I'm very encouraged that the White House has brought in uh, the former head of the Council of Economic Advisors, Kevin Hassett, back. Very good advisor, did a tremendous job. We have to keep in mind, too, the fundamentals of this economy before this came, the, this crisis hit, we're so strong, and I am so encouraged by the ingenuity and the American spirit that you're seeing. Haynes cutting off the sidelines, saying we're going to build, we're going to make masks. GM just announced that they're going to Indiana, starting up a plant to make up to 200,000 ventilators. The distilleries who are saying, okay, we'll put whiskey on hold, we'll start making hand sanitizer. That's why I have confidence in the American and what's going to happen and how we're going to get through this because the ingenuity of Americans and our spirit it is so strong, even in a time of uh, times like these. I think you're exactly right. Although I'd argue that whiskey is just as important as hand sanitizer during these times. <laughs> it might be uh, just as, as important to get through this. <laughs> right. I, I mean, it's going to help at the very least. But I hate to bring in politics in this during a time that's quite literally a crisis. But Joe Biden came out this morning. He made his first appearance for a long time, making a statement on a video type of message that was very critical of the president's type of response so far. So I do want to get your word on that, too. Joe Biden's been missing in action for the past couple days. Uh, uh, what do you think that he, this speaks to him about his campaign, where he does kind of go missing for a little bit, resurfaces with kind of a type of planned video message? In fact, we even saw that the prompter went wrong and he kind of went haywire from the whole thing altogether. What do you think this speaks broadly about the Biden campaign? I think he's unfit to lead. I think it's a tremendous contrast to see. Uh, you have President Trump working every single day for the American interests and with, with no politics. You know, from the very beginning, he said, can I have two and a half billion dollars to fight this? And Chuck Schumer said, that's too little, too late. Uh, Eight billion. And President Trump said, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, no, this isn't a time for politics. And then to have Joe Biden, who can't had a, plenty of time to prepare what he wanted to say to try to assure the American people, and he doesn't even know what to say once his teleprompter uh, messes up. And he's also politicizing this and spreading disinformation about a slush fund and corporate bailouts. These aren't bailouts. The airline industry didn't do anything wrong. They were hit by a virus that knows no political persuasion. This is a crisis, an emergency. And those airlines employ millions of people. And that's who we're talking about here. So they've been spreading, Democrats have been politicizing this from day one. It is unacceptable. And we really shouldn't stand for it as Americans when they try to put corporate uh, diversity boards and keeping track of airline and carbon emissions into this emergency funding bill. Well, can we add another string attached to Nancy Pelosi's carbon footprint as she's flying back and forth to blow up bipartisan deals? It's, it's absolutely appalling. No, and I think the American people generally get that. For example, they, they, will, they would be critical of the 2008 bailout, but that was a completely different situation. That was an example where the auto manufacturers were not really doing a good business. This is not that at all. This is the government telling people that they cannot go to work. So uh, once again, I hope that this kind of provides relief in the sense that the government did it to begin with, that hopefully they can help us climb out of this problem to begin with too, because to your point, there are a lot of American workers who are now going the second week without a paycheck, and that could be detrimental not only to our economy, but those individuals and their families in particular. But Liz, I appreciate you coming on during this trying time and really helping us break down this issue. Thank you.